my name is Martha Zink and I'm with Salian Consulting and this is another video in the Unboxing FileMaker 14 series. In this video I'm going to focus on the button bar. So first let me start off by telling you how the button bar works and some of its features and then I'll talk about an example of where I think this is going to be really useful in your FileMaker solutions. So here I have a layout where my navigation is on the upper right hand side of the screen. So we have projects, contacts, and main menu. In something before FileMaker 14, you probably would have created multiple buttons to handle this. But now with FileMaker 14, we can use one object to do multiple things, in this case to have multiple buttons. So let me jump into layout mode. Each one of these is a segment, and each segment can be either a button or a popover. Now let me show you a button bar from scratch, and then we'll talk about all the different components that exist. So here's the button bar object tool. I'm going to go ahead and just drag it out on the bottom of the screen here. And you'll notice that the very first button gets selected, and here in the button bar setup, there's a, an empty box where I can put in the name of the button. So we'll call it button 1, button 2, and button 3. Now, here at the very top of the button bar setup, we have a couple of options. We can make the buttons go down or across, and we can also add glyphs. So if I choose this here, I can go ahead and say that the first button is going to have this icon, the second button will have this icon, and then the third one will have this one. Now in the label of each button, I just went ahead and gave it some static text, button 3 for example. But I could go in here and say new space and, and then I could use something like get layout table name. Click OK. Now in layout mode it's just going to say calculation, but if I jump into browse mode it's going to say new context because the current table is the context table. Presumably if I'm on a layout where the table name is projects, it would say new projects. So you have one button that does the exact same functionality, which is make a new record, but based on its context, it can have a different description or a different label on it. The other thing you can do is you can select which segment is the active segment. So jumping back into browse mode, you'll notice that I have projects, contacts, and main menu. And you'll notice that the context button looks a little bit different than the other ones. And the reason is because I've selected that one as the active segment. Jumping into layout mode, I'm going to double click on the button bar again, and you'll see that right here I have active segment as contacts, and if we jump over to the inspector and look at the appearance tab, you'll see that we have quite a slew of options of how we can format the button bar. So here I'm looking at the button bar segment, and inactive is really any button, generically speaking, so any segment that hasn't been selected. Versus if I go to active, now we get that grayish color and we get the blue text. So I could go in here and make this bright yellow if I wanted to, you know, whatever makes sense for your solution. But it's really nice that you can customize it that way. And again, make it clear to the user where they are on the layout. Now for the button bar, let me close the inspector here. For the button bar, you have the ability to choose what's going to happen when somebody clicks on that segment. So if they click on the first segment, so button 1 here, right now it does nothing, but I could choose a single step or I could perform a script. The other thing you can do is you can convert a segment from a button, you can convert it to a popover. So now we get this popover section here that we're used to seeing when we, when we create just any other popover and not a button. So if I jump into browse mode, if I click on button 1, you'll notice that the popover shows up now. So I like that this one feature, this button bar, has a combination of buttons and popovers, and I get all these formatting options all in one place. This is going to be easier for copying and pasting over multiple layouts. It's going to keep things a little more organized. And let me show you how I think this is going to be really useful from a main menu perspective. So I'm going to jump over here to main menu with submenu. And we have three buttons, Projects, Contacts, and Settings. Now I'm just going to click through all three of those to show what I've come up with. I click on Projects, and we get four buttons all related to Projects. I click on Contacts, and we get four buttons all related to Contacts. And then I click on Settings, and we get just two buttons. So let's jump in Layout Mode and see exactly what's going on. First, let's take a look at the script related to these three buttons. Now, they all run the exact same script. The only difference is the script parameter. So if we look at the script here, very straightforward. It's setting a, a global variable to whatever the parameter is, so the word projects, contacts, or setting in this example. And then it's refreshing the button bar for me, that second button bar. Now this button bar over here is a little bit more complicated. So if we take a look at the inspector, 
the first thing is I'm going to make sure that I have the whole button bar selected. And if I look at the data tab, I have that it will hide when the global variable selected main menu is empty. And the idea is that when the database first opens up and the user hasn't selected projects, contacts, or settings, I want to make sure that the submenu doesn't show up yet. So that's the only rule there for hiding the whole button bar. Now there are three, four, five, six, seven buttons here, and they're going to show up in different scenarios. So if I double click here on this first button, you'll see that the button label is a calculation, and it basically says view blank list. Presumably it's going to say view projects list or view contacts list, depending on the context, depending on which button I've clicked on. This is a place where I don't want this button showing up when it's settings because it doesn't make sense. From a navigation perspective, the user would never have a view settings list in this example. So I've clicked on that specific button, that specific segment to be specific, and on the hide object I have that it's going to hide when the selected main menu is equal to settings. Now if we walk down through some of these other buttons, you'll see that they also have visibility turned on, conditional visibility. Some of these have static names, like view project by status. This is a place where I want this button to only show up for projects, so it says to hide it when the context or the selected main menu is not equal to projects. This is a parallel example where I only want this one to show up with contacts, so it's only going to sh show up when the context is contacts. This calculation here is very similar to the first one. This was the view blank list. This is create new blank, so create new projects or create new contacts, and again, I want it to hide when we're looking at the settings menu. And same thing here, search blank. And then these two down here are very specific to settings, so you'll see that it's only going to show up when the context is settings. So again, seven buttons, but the button bar is smart enough to only show the buttons that apply in the specific scenario. So what I like about this is that we're basically tailoring the navigation to what the user wants. One of the things that can be overwhelming from a user's perspective is having too many choices at once. If we had these four buttons, plus these four buttons, plus these two buttons on one layout, we're already at 10 buttons, and that's probably a pretty small solution there. Imagine if we had 16 buttons or 20 buttons, it could get overwhelming very quickly. So here, we have the ability to focus the user, give them only the choices that they care about, and we didn't have to create a bunch of hidden objects, we didn't have to have a bunch of different buttons or slide controls to hide things. We were able to use just one button bar to, to handle it, all of it. And then what's cool, just to mention it again, is the ability to make one of these buttons a popover. So here I have these different buttons. Currently they don't do anything because it's for a demo. But down here I have the search projects. I can click here and then I would be able to type in here, maybe hit the return key and search. I think that's a great place for keeping the user on the same layout and then just letting them use a popover to enter the data that they want. I think this is one of many ways that the button bar will be used. I think it's going to be a great tool for navigation. It's going to be a great tool for main menus. I really look forward to seeing how this gets applied among FileMaker 14 solutions. I hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe to Salient TV and thank you for watching.